when thou art nigh. I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. I need thee every hour in joy or pain. Come quickly and abide, or life is vain. I need thee, ever I need thee, every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. I need thee every hour, most holy one. Oh, make me thine indeed, thou blessed Son. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. Okay, you can be seated. Thank you, Terry. Appreciate that. We're going to uh, have our prayer right now. We need to keep uh, Pastor Aaron and Pastor Corey and the children that went with them. We need to keep them in prayer for decisions to be made for the Lord. Also, to return them home safely as they went, and now they could be coming back Friday, I guess. We did have a praise from that Monday night. One of the children from this church got saved. So that was a blessing. So let's go, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day that you've given us. It's your day, Lord, and we should be glad in it. We pray for the young folks over in the other part of the church there, having service there. We pray that you work in hearts there. Be with the grown, the adults as they teach and preach to them. Be with us here, Lord, as you work in hearts and minds. Give us guidance, give us strength. Help us to be good servants to you, Lord. We do pray for our campers. That's the way this week, Lord. Praise, praise God that one of those young children got saved. We pray that you continue to work in that heart and help them to grow. I'll be with Pastor Aaron and his family and Pastor Corey and his family, bring them home safely, Lord. Give them strength and wisdom while they're there, but get them home safely. It's a rough road out there sometimes. It's not getting any better. And Lord, I pray that you be with us tonight as I hold this Bible study. Fill me with your Holy Spirit as I teach, Lord. I can't do this by myself. I need your help. We love you and wait on your return. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We have a missionary letter. Matt and Diane Olson's, Olson, it's uh, trying to reach our military. They were overseas in Italy, but now they're back home, going beyond the yellow ribbon missionaries to the U.S. military, Warner Robbins, Georgia. He writes in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Tornado. Tornado, he says, with exclamation points. Yes, unexpectedly, in the midst of a thunderstorm, a tornado touched down and ravaged our neighborhood early in April. Overwhelmingly, the response of those who saw the destruction said, God has blessed and protected you. Indeed, he did. Just two doors down, the house has been demolished and hauled away, just two doors down from their house in Georgia. Although we had... Many large trees fall in our yard. We had fairly minor damage from the two that landed on our house. We have been working to clear the debris since the tornado hit and now have most of our backyard back. We give thanks to God for many volunteers who helped. There is still much work to be done in tree removal. While we wait, the homeowners insurance to settle with the contractors before they can come and repair their houses, and that can be that can be a long wait sometimes when you don't have a home, a door to open up and go into and have a roof under your head. He continues on. What do we do when tragedy strikes? 
Jesus told us to be fruitful in Luke 13, 1 through 9. The day after the tornado, we went on our scheduled church flyer distribution for Easter services. Remember, these are a couple months behind. 500 flyers were distributed in neighborhoods around the church, bringing in visitors before Easter was even there. What a blessing that was. We also put together 34 life, life baskets and put them at people's doors and hung, hung them on the, uh, for distributing. They looked like Easter baskets, but they were filled with Bibles, tracts, snacks, and little trinkets or two, and everyone was happy to receive them. We have started a weekly ladies' Bible study on the armor of God. It is encouraged, encouraged to see the faithful participation of the church, folks, to see visitors at church. Slowly, we begin to see growth and excitement for the outreach of ministries. We thank you for your continued care and support. What an encouragement and blessing you are to us. Then it has prayer requests, opportunities to witness to military families, souls to be saved, wisdom for new health care plan, repairs and restoration for the tornado damages. And then he has a few praises there. God's protect, protection to us and our home during the tornado. Special services for Easter were well attended. And more new visitors. What a blessing that was. Brother Terry with our next song. Okay, for our final song of the evening, turn to 128, The Windows of Heaven. This just has one verse, so let's sing it through two times. The windows of heaven are open, the blessings are falling tonight. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart since Jesus made everything right. I gave him my old tattered garment, he gave me a robe of pure white. I'm feasting on manna from heaven, and that's why I'm happy tonight. The windows of heaven are open, the blessings are falling tonight. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart since Jesus made everything right. I gave him my old tattered garment, he gave me a robe of pure white. I'm feasting on manna from heaven, and that's why I'm happy tonight. At this time, we would normally take our offering, but as we're used up for ushers, when we finish tonight, if, if you have an offering, just walk back through there and put it in the plate, and we'll take care of it. Now, <clears throat> yeah, I'm on. if you would turn to Psalm 23, Psalm 23, I think everybody's there now. No name is so highly treasured as the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. David, speaking of a great shepherd, says, He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Because the shepherd cares for his sheep, he leads them in the path of righteousness for his namesake. The psalmist sees himself not as a shepherd, but as a lamb led by the shepherd. That's David. The Lord is saying that he's looking at David as a lamb, and he's a shepherd to lead us. He didn't do us any favor when he started calling us lambs because really they're a very weak animal and they need to be led and taken care of all the time. 
Well, as humans, don't we need that as well? We do. We get off the beaten path sometimes. <clears throat> Most often we think of sheep as rather helpless creatures. David was a man of war and valor. He was a man's man. Just bear with me there one second. I thought so. Now we're going to start on the right page. No problem. It's pretty much almost the same as it was, but he says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now take notice of this. He's not the shepherd, not a shepherd, but it says, but my shepherd. Whose shepherd? Our shepherd. When this is the testimony of our lives, then we be able to say, I shall not want, because we will know that our shepherd provides everything we need. And he does, if we'll let him. The Bible says in Psalm 23, 2, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. We have considered these phrases found in Psalm 23. We come to the, our key verse, and it says, He restoreth my soul. I don't know about you, but I need my soul restored. Not all the time, but there's some time that we need to be restored. Every fear in life will vanish if we keep our eyes on the Lord. Our rest is found in the presence of our shepherd. We can rest, we can rest in him. The Bible says he restores my soul. Emphasis could be placed on the word restoreth or the word soul. But we need to emphasize the shepherd. He's the one. This is the only way our souls can be restored. Now if you turn on back a few chapters to Psalm 42. Psalm 42. Verses 1 through 5. I still hear a few Bibles turning. I'll wait just a couple seconds. Psalm 42, verses 1 through 5. As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee. O God, my soul thirsteth for the God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Verse 3. For my tears have been my meat day and night while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, for I have gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise, with the multitude that kept holy, that kept holy day. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquitted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his continents. You know, we see that word there, cast, <clears throat> in verse 5. Old English shepherds would speak of a sheep being cast, and which actually meant that somehow or another it might have been the sheep trying to find a nice soft place to lay, but instead of laying down, he would tilt, and he would be laying on his back. Well, guess what? Unless the shepherd helps him get back on his feet, he can't, he can't get back up. He can't get back up. If he stays there very long, he could die that way. He's a defenseless animal in a wrong position for the prey that chase after them. Here the psalmist says, why art thou cast down? He's saying, why do we feel that we are in a helpless position? I don't guess anybody out there has ever felt like that, have they? Sure we have. Sure we have. Sometimes we just feel helpless. We can't do anything about the situation. Folks, just remember, we can always pray. We can always pray. God hears those prayers. Sometimes he answers them right away. Sometimes he says wait, and then sometimes he says no. 
but he'll answer your prayer. Verse 5 says, Why art thou disquitted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. The sheep had been cast down. He needed to be restored. When David prayed in Psalm 51, verse 12, we won't turn there, he said, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. He didn't say, Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. No, he said, Restore unto me thy salvation. He didn't say that either. He said, Restore unto me the joy. I have joy in Christianity, but I can't really say I have the joy like I did when I first got saved. You're still saved. You're still happy that the Lord and Savior died for you and you got a way to heaven. You got a home in heaven someday. But sometimes we lose a, you, yeah, we lose a little bit of that joy, but we can get it back because he can restore us. He can restore us. Now we should be... Uh, Discuss between the two words relationship and fellowship. We establish the right relationship when we ask Jesus Christ to forgive us our sins and he comes into us to live that very time. The Holy Spirit comes in there. He's in there now if you're here tonight and you've been saved. Over in John chapter 10 verses 27 through 29, you don't have to turn there for the sake of time, but two very familiar verses my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which giveth them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. What a security there, knowing that we're always in his hand, and no one Anything we do, it don't say go out there and, and try to live like a non-Christian. But we're always in his hand. He's always there for us. Our relationship with Jesus Christ is something that cannot be changed. Once we're born into God's family, we can't be unborn. What a blessing that is. We have eternal life, and this life begins the moment we trust Christ as Lord and Savior. We're saved by his precious blood, his sacrifice on the cross. He shed his precious blood, sacrificed his body, took him down and went to a borrowed tomb, and on the third day, he rose again, taking the sting out of death for us, not him, taking on the sin of the world, not his sin, but our sin. When we ask God to forgive us our sin, trust in him, and what he done on the cross, the Lord Jesus comes to live in our, our hearts. He promised in Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him. 23 or 24 years ago, he was knocking at my door. And I left him come in. I was going through a hard time in that, in that very time my first wife had passed away. And I knew that I had a void in my heart, wasn't saved, but I could just, I just felt something tugging at me, something else was missing. It was my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I accepted him that night. Once he comes in, he'll never leave us or forsake us. Our relationship with him cannot change. We cannot be children of God one day and children of the devil the next day. Satan's work can be undone, but God's work can never be undone. It's here to stay. Our salvation can never be undone. What a blessing it is to know that. All we're going to mess up as humans, that's our human nature. But he's always there to pick us back up, isn't he? Amen. Just like the sheep that's on his back and can't get up. Sometimes we're on our back and we can't get up. Fellowship is what we all have in common. All God's children should daily be in communion with Christ, be in fellowship with Him, being close to Him.
praying to him and give him in praise for what he done for us. David did not pray, restore unto me thy salvation. He prayed, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. The joy. It was not his salvation that was going. It was the joy that was going. Folks, we can get that joy back. We can get her back. In other words, Lord, keep me upright as a sheep lying on his back, like we said earlier. You know, our, our opportunities can be restored. The word restore means to bring again or to bring home. Studying the word restore in the Bible, we find that opportunities can be restored. You may feel as if you had ruined things, that nothing good's ever gonna come back to you. If you just messed up, nothing's gonna come again. You may feel that you have wrecked your life and your family and nothing else can be restored. Well, you're entirely wrong. Over in Job chapter two, verse 25 it says, and I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I have sent among you. Pay special attention to the word restore. God said, I've judged you with these insects because you have sinned, but I will restore the years. Does that mean that he's going to have us live those years over again? No. But he could if he wanted to. But it means that our life last left from here on, he's going to restore. He's going to restore the things that were lost on those and those insects ate the things up. And we'll even have more than what we had before if we just trust in him. Are you happy? Are you joyful in the Lord? You say, well, I'm not as joyful as I could be. God can restore. The Lord can work in our lives to make so much better of what we had left in excess. Others can be restored as well. Over in Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, it says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Consider thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Christians give evidence of spiritual maturity when you're concerned about a person that's had a fall. It could be a person that hasn't been in church for a good while. It could be something else, it could be something else. But nevertheless, you reach out to that person and try to bring them back in the fold. That's Christian maturity there, folks. When people are among you that choose to stray into sin, we can restore them. We can bring them back. You can't tell a person what to do. But you can say, brother or sister, I've been praying for you. We miss you in church. We miss you in the Bible study. You can't say, well, you better come. You're going you're to be, uh, you're going to lose your salvation. No, you're not going to lose your salvation. We will lose rewards, though, that we've done for the Lord. Our souls can be restored. Everything we have dealt with thus far on restoring our souls. There has been something at the very heart of the matter for which we can have no substitute. When we come into proper communion with Christ, when our souls are restored, when we are in fellowship with the Lord, He completely changes our lives. I always use myself as an example of that. Did I ever think in my younger years that I'd be up here teaching a Bible study or praying to the Lord? I'm even on, I say television, but we're, we're even on live stream. Incidentally, you folks out there, you got me really nervous. <laughs> Just kidding. A little. <laughs> but the psalmist said, 
the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He brings us back where we should be. When we get off the beaten path, he grabs a hold of us and brings us back in. What a blessing. The sheep doesn't restore himself. This is the work of the shepherd. And we know who the shepherd is, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to do the work if we let him. Sometimes we want to be a little hard-headed and do things on our own or go our own direction. That's the wrong direction to go in, folks. We find a very clear story in the New Testament of a shepherd restoring one of his sheep. The story, the story was about Simon Peter and how he bragged and said that he would be right beside Jesus' side no matter what happened. The Lord Jesus told him, when the cock croweth three times, you'll deny me. Oh, no, Lord, not me, not me. The others may, but I won't. Well, what happened? We know that he done that. And then he realized what Jesus had told him. He had told him beforehand. Just how was Peter restored? Over in Luke 22, the shepherd was restoring his sheep. Peter was loved by the Lord. If we have pro proven to people that we love them, we can go in time of great need and listen to what they have to say. If they don't think you love you, if they don't think you're sincere, they're not going to tell you their problems. They're not going to say that I need Jesus and on and on and on. The Lord Jesus proved to Peter that he loved him long before Peter ever denied him. Peter was somewhere watching when Christ died on the cross and shed his precious blood for you and me and the rest of the world. We are loved by Jesus Christ with an everlasting love. I know that's hard to understand, but that's how he loves us, folks. This means that there will never come a time when God does not love us. This means that there'll never come a time God starts loving us because he always has loved us. He even loved us when we was in the womb of our mothers. He loved us then. Peter was prayed for by the Lord. The Lord Jesus said in Luke 22, verses 31 through 32, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you. The failures in our personal life most of the time are prayer failures. Failures in my family, in the family, prayers fail because we're not praying. That's why. I have talked to my children far more than I've prayed for them. I have prayed for them every day but I have talked too much and prayed too little. I guess that probably fits us all at times, doesn't it? Peter was called by a name. You say, well, how does, how does the Lord remember all these names? Well, you remember back in Psalm, he put all the stars in the sky and knows every name of every stars. Now, I don't know whether you've ever tried to count the stars, but virtually impossible because you get to 100 or 200 and then you forget where you're at and where you was up in the sky trying. But get in your minds and it's hard to comprehend that the Lord Jesus put them there and knows every name of all those stars. Amazing. But our God is amazing. Over in Mark 16, 7, after the resurrection of Christ, the divine messenger was sent with this message. But go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall see him as he said unto you. He called Peter by name, singled him out. He can single us out if he wants to. We have the idea that there are so many people who claim to be Christians that it would be too much for the Lord to know every person that's in his fold wrong. He knows every person that's in his fold. When we're saved, the big book's out, 
the book of life. And her name scratched in there, written in. It can't be, it can't be erased. Just a thought of mine would be maybe take a paintbrush and put over your name. But guess what? Your name bleeds back through. We're in the Lamb's book of life. What a blessing. What a blessing to know that. What an encouragement. Peter was called by name. And the Holy Spirit deals with you through the preaching of God, God's word. We may be hundreds of people in the meeting, but there may be just very one person that's being preached to. He's preaching to the whole congregation. But this, just like he restoreth my soul, there might be one person out there, there might be five people out there. It might be ten, I don't know. It may not be any. But a lot of times... It comes directly to you. I remember when I first started coming to this church. Pastor Wave was preaching in. For about five weeks in a row, everything that he said was every question that I had. Every question. Was that a coincidence? I think not. That was God working in, in my heart, giving me encouragement, knowing that I'm going to meet your needs. The other half might be going, but I'm still here, and I'm, I'm here on the other side of you. Never to let go. What a blessing that is. Peter's sin was seen by Christ. In Luke 22, Peter spoke of an oath denying that he knew Christ. The Bible says in verse 66, And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, and Peter remembered the words of the Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter's sin was seen by the Lord. Peter turned around and those eyes of the Lord was that straight into his eyes. Peter went out and wept bitterly. His eyes are always on us, folks. He's always there. Well, sometimes we might say, wonder where he's at. He's there. He's waiting on that moment. May God by his Holy Spirit, speak to us and help us to know our sins and wait us to receive us, his forgiveness as confessed sins. Confess those sins at the end of the day and try not to do them the next day. I know, easier said than done sometimes because we live in a sinful world out there. But the Holy Spirit will help us through. Peter was able to remember his sins Days had passed since Peter had denied the Lord and the disciples was out fishing and caught nothing. All night long and the sun was starting to come up. They seen a silhouette over on the shore of Galilee. And when they got a little closer, they seen it was the Lord Jesus Christ. He had prepared breakfast for the whole fishing team. Just as Peter denied the Lord three times, Christ questions Peter three times. Remember? Peter, do thou lovest thou? Lovest thou me? Lovest thou me? Lovest thou me? That's the old saying which comes around, goes or goes around, comes around, isn't it? Come right back to Peter, didn't it? This question was put in its right place at the very right time. If we're going to be restored in our fellowship with the Lord. We need to be able to say to the psalmist, he restoreth my soul. Then we must face the real heart of the issue. Peter bragged in front of everyone. If everyone denies you, you can count on me. But he couldn't count on him, could he? He was full of himself. We all have a real problem with pride, however, it goes deeper than that. Christ said, here is the great question. Peter, do you love me? The real heart of the matter is loving Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. You're here tonight. What a blessing. You're showing that you love the Lord. At the heart of the issue, whether or not you love the Lord, you may say, I can't get along with that person. I can't get along with this person. That's not a problem 
when our souls are restored, you get along with everybody. When our souls are restored, we can deal with the opportunities God gives us. We cannot deal with others and with opportunities until first our soul is restored. We have communion with the Lord Jesus Christ. Consider how far Peter could have gone if God, the shepherd, hadn't went after him. He brought him back, didn't he? If you're going to help anyone else, you must first allow God to deal with your own heart. Then we can help others. Then we can talk to others. Then we can show others the gospel. In Psalm 23, David testifies as a sheep, praising his shepherd. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Because, because the Lord is my shepherd, he leadeth me beside still waters. Because the Lord is my shepherd, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Because the Lord is my shepherd, he restoreth my soul. He restoreth my soul. Three things I hope you picked up on there tonight. We need to see that God is able to restore the years we have wasted. He can restore them. God can take the life we have left and make so much out of it it far exceeds our losses. He can restore true joy to our lives. Secondly, be determined to work at restoring others who have fallen. The spiritual Christian will seek to bring back those who have fallen. When someone sins, there should be repentance, forgiveness, and also restoration. Third, but not least, we need to desire for Christ to restore our personal fellowship with him. The Lord Jesus knows us by name, and he singles us out, calling for us to be restored to him. He wants to bring us back into communion with him. When's the last time you spoke to him? Was it today? Was it two or three days ago? Was it last week? A month ago? Two or three months? Folks, he wants to talk to us every day. How many times? That's up to you. If you got the time, it don't have to be a mile long prayer. It can just, it can just be, Lord, thank you for giving me the strength to get my grass mowed today. Thank you for giving me the strength to do for a neighbor over here. The list goes on and on and on. But talk to him. He wants you to talk to him. He wants you to trust in him. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day that you've given us. And your precious word is always there for us to read. The letter you wrote to us, Lord, like all other letters that you get in the mail, you have to open it up to read it. So help us to read your word, Lord, and apply it to our lives. Help us to be doers and not just hearers. Help us in the prayer meeting, Lord, when we finish up here. That souls will be prayed for, souls will be won. You'll be honored and glorified. We love you and wait on your return. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I'm going to get your uh, prayer sheet out. And uh, I didn't get any report on uh, on Brother Dennis Allen, how his back's doing. I wanted to call him and maybe i get a chance tomorrow, but uh, we need to keep him in prayer as well. Nancy's son's operation Monday went well. We need to keep praying for him because they've s sent that off for a biopsy and we pray that that comes back the way it should come back, not... Can't think of the word right now, but and then uh, Chelsea Garcia, Tammy Hensley's daughter, they're going to induce labor Friday, so I guess she'll have the little one this coming Friday. So we need to we need to keep her in prayer. We also need to pray for the campers up there. 
not just our church, but all the other churches, all the other adults, all the children, that maybe some of those children would get saved. We need to pray for that. I, I, don't, I didn't know whether it was a young man or, or a young lady, but uh, either or, we need to pray for him to continue to grow. They've ex- done what they needed to do. Now they have to grow day by day, inch by inch, step by step. Anyone? Yeah. We need to keep uh, <clears throat> Pastor Wade's mother in, uh, in prayer, Orpha Wade, that had that operation. I don't know, I, I don't know whether they, she's got her results yet or not. Well, good. Glad to hear that. She went home today. What a blessing. Uh, Linda Mann's not in here. I don't know whether her mother's uh, in the hospital. She may have got out, but she had to take, uh, she had to have some rehab, and they were going to do that at her house, so we need to pray for Linda Mann's mom also. And on this, uh, there on my friend Mike Ryan that has that cancer, he's He's bit another bullet. Uh, his sister Sherry went in to have her gall- gallbladder taken out. She's the oldest. And uh, I think she was home. Don't quote me on that. But something happened and she got, she had to go back to the hospital and she passed away. So uh, he's dealing with the cancer that he has also, the loss of his sister. So we'll keep him in prayer as well. Anyone out there have a prayer request? Anyone? Yes. Yeah, that's you get attached to those animals. They're they're a companion. Anyone else? Okay, we'll get a Lord in prayer. Yes. Okay. We will. Thank you. Appreciate that. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord, we do thank you for this day that you've given us, Lord. We're here tonight, and what a blessing it is to have Wednesday night church. We can have some fellowship with one another, talk, talk out what we've done for the day or a problem here or a problem there. This hurts, that hurts. But we're having fellowship, Lord. And now we're having fellowship with you, talking with you, Lord. I do pray for those campers from all the churches, Lord. Be with the adults as they teach and preach, play games and whatnot, and present the gospel. Help those young children to have an open mind, an open heart, we pray for that young man or saved. We pray that you continue to work in their lives. Lord, I have a prayer sheet in front of me. You know all the names that's on that sheet. I pray for each and every one. I'll pray for some individually, but you know them all, Lord. So we pray that you work in lives there, meet needs, give guidance, give strength. We do pray for our family. Brother Henry Reeder has that problem with his feet due to his diabetes. We pray that you do a work there, Lord. Doesn't seem like there's a whole lot that can be done, but I know you can, you're the great physician. You can do anything that you will, if it be your will. We do pray for Susan Bunker with her health issues. Pray that they get back in church. We do miss them, Lord. Pray for Stephanie Butter, uh, Buzzard with her recovery from her surgery. I do pray for uh, Joyce Stolmeyer with her recovery. She had uh, rehabilitation today and got a got a sore shoulder tonight. 
Give her strength, Lord. I do pray for Trenton Brown with his seizures, Lord, that you do a work there. I think of uh, Raleigh Anders battling that cancer. Lord, you left him hang on longer than the doctors told him, and you can continue. You can heal him, Lord, if that be your will. We'd like to see him back here in church. What a blessing that would be. I pray for my own wife, Wanda, with health issues, also spiritual issues. Get her back in church, Lord. I pray that. Pray for Brother Butch Souders, health issues. Sister Karen as well. Do think of Nancy Alger with her health issues. Be with her. I pray for Darlene Hartman's legs, having trouble there, Lord. Meet her needs. Mark Peltier that had that operation Monday. Doing well, Lord. We pray that those results come back negative. I pray for all the people here that has cancer, Lord, that you do a work there. I pray for my friend Mike Ryan that has had cancer. It's moved to his lungs now, Lord. Be with him. Then his loss of his older sister. Be with the Ryan family, Lord. Give them peace and comfort at this time. Pray for uh, Sister Teresa's daughter, Brittany. Just found out. We pray that that can be fixed, Lord, or you will intervene or give the doctors the wisdom that they need to take care of that, Lord. I pray for Tom and Louise Bradley that has some health issues, Lord. Not doing too well. We pray for them. Lift them up. We look forward to maybe seeing them Sunday in church. We pray that they can make it. We pray for their son, Stuart, with his issues, diabetes and whatnot, Lord. Lift him up, Lord. I do pray for uh, Linda Mann's mother that was in the hospital, Lord. She may be out now, but she has to go through some therapy. So be with her as she goes through this therapy. Pray for, uh, pray for Brenda Hood's son, Alan spiritual needs pray for our shut-ins Raleigh and Dorothy Anders Richard and Cindy Turner Geraldine Buzzard thank you Lord that she's doing a little better with her operation Ellen Deal that had her eyes operated on she says she's seeing things now that she hadn't seen for a long while what a blessing Ann Fowler pray for Judy Rousen with her health issues Lord we pray for this country the United States of America that we'll have revival and come back to you, Lord, where we used to be, but where we should be now. We pray for our president of the United States of America, that he'll come know your son Jesus as Lord and Savior. I pray for this lady, Ashley, that has cancer. I pray that you be with her. Now, Lord, as we continue through the night, we pray that you bring her pastor and assistant pastor and families back safely from camp. Be with us Sunday, Lord, as there surely will be somebody that comes through those doors that doesn't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. We pray that you do a work there, Lord, and that soul will be saved and give you all the praise and glory. We love you and wait on your return. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Don't forget your tithe. If you have a tithe, just put it in the plate back there. We are dismissed.